Hi! In this video, we'll be talking about hidden attributes. So real quick, let's review what attributes are. Attributes are the values that a class keeps track of. So in the point class example, we have two attributes, x and y. Every instance, every object of the point class gets its very own x attribute and its very own y attribute. And we can set those attributes inside the init method. So in this scenario, we have the point class, and the point class isn't keeping track of any of its own attributes, but every single instance of the point class, for example, p1 and p2, has their very own x and y, and those x and y attributes can be different from instance to instance. Then we have class attributes. Class attributes are at the class level. Rather than each instance getting its own attribute, every instance shares the same single attribute. So in the point class, we had the example num points made. It starts off as zero, and every time a new point is initiated, every time a new point is created, we increment it by one. And so in this scenario, the point class is keeping track of one attribute, and that is the num points made attribute. And every time we make a new point, that is incremented by one. So we're able to access this class attribute either by saying points.numPointsMade, or we can go through the individual instances, p1.numPointsMade, p2.numPointsMade. These are all referencing the same attribute. Now, the issue is, since this is shared across the entire class, someone outside of the class could say, OK, I'm just going to set numPointsMade to 100. And that's an issue because we want this value to represent the number of points that have been created, not just any random value that it gets set to. So how can we fix this? Well, introducing hidden attributes. Hidden attributes are attributes that are private to the class. The attributes can only be accessed by code inside the class, not outside of it. You might be wondering, why is this useful? Why do we want things to be private? Well, it's important to think about who should be able to access and modify the attributes of an object. Hidden attributes allow us to put a layer of control between the class and the code that is using the class. So in this scenario, we have num points made. And we don't want it to be possible for any code outside of the class to change num points made. So all we have to do to make it hidden is put two underscores in front of it. Now, the only code that can access num points made is the code within the class. So if we tried to do something like point.numPointsMade equals 20, Python would throw an error. It wouldn't let us do this. Similarly, we can put hidden attributes at the object level. We can say, OK, every single point instance is going to get its own color. And we want color to be hidden. So we put two underscores in front of color. Now, every color will start off blue, and code outside of the point class won't be able to change it. So if we tried to say p.color equals red, Python would throw an error. It wouldn't let us access it. So this is great, but now we have these attributes and we can't actually access them outside the class. So how do we ever, what, what good are they? How, how do we use them? Well, the way we can access these hidden attributes is using getter methods. So getter methods provide a way for the outside world to get at these hidden attributes. And so in general, we just write a getter method like this. We put the name of the hidden attribute after get. So here we say get color just returns self.color. And now, outside of the point class, we can actually print p.getColor, and it'll print the color of this point, which is blue. Similarly, we can do the same thing with uh, numPointsMade, the class variable. So we can define a method, getNumPointsMade, that simply returns the value of numPointsMade. Note that at the class level, this getter method doesn't take self as a parameter. It is not an instance level method, it is a class level method, so it doesn't need a self parameter. And we call it on the point class itself, rather than an instance of the point class. So that's how we can get at these uh, hidden attributes. Rather than directly referencing them, we put a layer of control between, so we go through a getter method. Now, what about changing the value? Well, introducing setter methods. Setter methods allow the outside world to set or assign values to the hidden attributes. And the reason we want to use setter methods is because they allow the class to put some, some sanity checks on the, on the value getting set. They allow the class to make some checks on the proposed value rather than giving the outside world full-fledged access. So for example, let's say we want to be able to let the outside world change the color, but only if they're changing it to red, blue, or yellow. We can write a setter method that takes the new proposed value and only makes the change if the new value is red, blue, or yellow. That way, if the outside world, if code outside the class tries to change the color to red, it'll work. It'll actually set the color to red. If it tries to change it to orange, it'll actually put a, put a check in between and say, no, we don't want any points to be orange, so it'll, it won't actually take effect. It'll remain blue. So this is how we use hidden attributes. You simply put two underscores in front of the attribute name, and you can write getter and setter methods to expose this hidden attribute to the outside world. So let's see some real examples of this. So here we have our point class from earlier. It has an init method that sets the initial x and y value of the point. 
and it has a num points made class attribute that keeps track of how many total points have been created. So here we're making a single point at 3, 4, and we're going to print out the number of points that have been made so far. So if we run this, we see, yes, one point has been made. If we make another one at 5, 6, and print out the number of points made, we see that it's 2. Awesome. The problem is, what if the outside world decides to set num points made to 100? Well, now num points made is stuck at 100, and that doesn't accurately reflect the fact that only two points have been made. So to fix this, we're going to turn num points made into a hidden attribute. So all we're going to do is put two underscores in front. And now, if we try to access num points made, we see that Python says, oh, this is an error. Point has no attribute num points made. So even if we put two underscores in front of it, Python will say, OK, that attribute doesn't exist. So how do we get at this attribute? Well, we're going to write a getter method. So we're going to define get num points made, and it will simply return point dot num points made. So now instead of directly accessing it, we'll use the getter method, get num points made. And we see, great, we see two. We can make another point, p3 equals point at 10, 10. And we should see three, awesome. Now, there is one weird thing here. If we were to try to directly access num points made, if we said point dot num points made equals 100, and then we print it out, point dot num points made, we see that this actually is set to 100, but our actual num points made remains intact. It's still three. So this is doing something weird where we're actually defining a brand new variable, a brand new attribute on the point class that is independent from this hidden attribute. And the outside world can mess with it however it wants. It's still not going to touch this hidden attribute, which is only accessible through getting them points made. So that's why you're still able to set a new one, but the original is still protected. It's still hidden. In general, we won't be writing any code like this. Um, if we want an attribute to be hidden, we will only access it through uh, getter and setter methods. So that's how we can make a getter method. Now, what if we want to have an attribute on the point itself? Let's actually create a hidden point attribute, hidden instance attribute called color, and it will start off as blue. We're also going to write a getter method for this color. Return self.color. And now we can print out p3.get color. Oh, double underscores. So we see that p3 is blue. And if we want to be able to change it, we're going to have to write a setter method. So we can write set color of self to be this new color. And just to show that we can put some uh, added checks in place, let's only set the color if it's in if it's red, blue, or yellow. So if new color is in the array, red, blue, or yellow, then go ahead and set it. Self.color will be equal to new color. And now we can try to p3.setColor yellow. And we'll try to set it again to orange. We see that the first one works, it gets set to yellow, but the second one does not because uh, we don't want any points being orange. So this is how we can use hidden attributes to put a layer of uh, control between the attributes inside the class and the outside world manipulating those attributes. Now it's your turn to go in and write some hidden attributes.